Good day, grade nine science students. Today, what we're learning about is ionic compounds. We learned when we drew Bo uh, bohr rutherfords we understood that they were neutral to start. Same amount of protons as electrons, but atoms give away electrons or take electrons so that their valence shell is full, so they become stable. So normally atoms will go from neutral to stable. Now, the number of electrons that you give away or you take depends on the ionic charge number, which I'm going to show you on the periodic table in a second. We do know if an element gives away uh, negatively charged electrons, it will become positive. So if you give away electrons, okay, so if you give some electrons away, you still have protons left over that make you positive. Elements that take electrons will become negative because electrons are negative and they're going to take as many electrons as their ionic charge number which I'll show you, show you in a second. So here we have our periodic table and you'll notice that the metals are on the left hand side of this staircase that I've drawn and the non-metals are on the right. Now if I drew these out you would know again remembering that you can look at the number up top and it will tell you how many valence electrons we have. So we skip all the guys in the middle but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But this also means if you have one valence electron it's easier for these guys if you have less than four. So these guys all the metals they will become positive ions. So most of these metals up to three, and then we get to four where something weird happens, plus or minus four. And these are the charges. Every element below this will have these charges. So for example, if you are magnesium, you have this number here. It's going to form a two plus charge. If you have nitrogen or phosphorus or arsenic, it will form a three negative charge. So metals like to become positive and non-metals like to become negative. All right, let's take a look. I've drawn the Bohr-Rutherford for beryllium on this side and fluorine on this side. Now, right now, are they neutral? Or are they stable? If you look at the amount of dots they have, the amount of electrons, these two atoms are neutral, but they're not stable because they don't have a full shell. So we already know what will happen here. Beryllium wants to get rid of its two electrons that are on the outermost side, which is up here somewhere, if I can point at it, these guys out here. And on the other side, we have fluorine, which wants to gain one electron. Beryllium, we know, is going to form a two plus charge, and fluoride is going to form a negative one charge. Now, what can happen is, is that these guys can actually help each other out, because beryllium wants to give up electrons, and fluorine wants to take electrons. So let me show you what I mean. So beryllium will give up its one electron to fluorine, and fluorine is actually going to become satisfied at this point but you can see that beryllium still doesn't have uh, a full shell it still has to get rid of this electron that I'm showing you right here so what we have to do is we have to add another fluorine at this point we can see that beryllium has given up its two electrons and there's two fluorine atoms to make this satisfied and that is how this stabilizes at this point we can see that we have our beryllium over here with a two plus charge it is a cation and you can see that we have two anions over here. Two, we call it not fluorine, we change the ending to I, fluoride ions, and they are two anions, okay? Now the question is, is why do they hang out together? Well, the answer is, is they hang out together because positive things like negative things. We have a two plus ion plus two negative one ion, or anions. Here am I show, I'm showing it in a different way. Beryllium was in group two. It had two valence electrons and it lost two electrons to form a two plus cation. Fluoride was in group seven. It gained one electron to get to negative one anion. And you can see that I have two fluorides because the two electrons were transferred. What's the overall charge of this compound? The answer is, if you have one beryllium, that gives you a two plus charge, but if I have two fluorides, each gaining one electron, that's a negative one charge on each fluoride. It's two negative. Overall, this ionic compound is neutral. It has no charge. What is the formula for beryllium fluoride? This is what we call it, beryllium fluoride. And the formula, 
I don't know why I did that there, is B E F two. You have one beryllium for every two fluorides and that is the neutral charge. This is the key in understanding how to make ionic compounds. Now there's an easier way to write the formula and I'm gonna show you how to do it now. Writing formulas. Formulas are with the element symbol and the subscripts below them. So for example, calcium iodine. What we do is we write the symbols, the metal first and the non-metal second. And then we write the charges above it. So let's do that over here. So I look on my periodic table at calcium. I look at the top, I realize it's in group two, so therefore it's got two plus charge. I look at iodine, I realize it's in group seven, so therefore it's gonna form a negative one charge. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna crisscross the charges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down the CAI, the two, let me give me a second here, where am I, right here. So I'm gonna bring down the one, which was here, it ends up going here, and I'm gonna bring down the two here. So that means that one calcium is gonna match up with two iodides. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop the charges and write as subscripts. So that's CII2, and then we get rid of the ones. So we have no ones, so CAI2, and that's the answer. Okay, if we want to name compounds, that means that uh, we're gonna just do the opposite. So we look at the, we don't look at the subscripts, which are one and two, we just name the elements that we see. We don't care that there's two iodines here, we just say, uh, write the name of the metal and then the non-metal. And we always change the naming of the non-metal to ide. So it'd be chloride, fluoride, in this case it's going to be iodide. Okay, so this is what we do. So to write the name of this, what is the name of this going to be? It's going to be calcium, and then I see that I have iodine there, but I'm gonna drop the uh, NE, and I'm gonna put DE here, and it's gonna be called calcium iodide. I'm gonna give you a couple examples and see if you can do them quickly. Okay, try and write the formula for magnesium nitride. Okay, I'm pausing the video here. The formula, if you didn't get it correct, this is how you should have done it. If you did correct it, you probably did this. You found magnesium, it's in group two. So magnesium has a two plus charge. We write down the element symbol and then we write down the charges. We then find nitrogen, it is in group 5A, so it has a three negative charge. We then cross the charges and reduce. So it becomes Mg3N2. Get rid of the charges, it can't be reduced any further than this. This is just Mg3N2. You might be confused by the reduce bit, I'll show you that in the next example. Okay, rate the formula for strontium selenide. I'm trying to answer the correct answer, looking at the periodic table. Okay, if you did it correctly, you would see that strontium is in group two, and you'd see selenide is in group 6A, or group 16. These are the charges that each one is going to be using, two plus, two negative. We write down the element symbol, SR. Strontium has a two plus charge, selenium has a two negative charge. We then cross and reduce. If you got it wrong and you wrote this, CR at uh, two SE two, so the numbers come down. So I'm just bringing the numbers down and I'm getting rid of the charges. What you forgot to do is you forgot to reduce. And maybe I haven't shown you that, so you don't understand that, but that's okay. That means you have a two and a two, which can reduce down to one and one. So anytime I can divide a number into both of these and make it smaller, I've got the right answer. So the answer is SRSE. And that's it, SRSE. This means that one two plus cation matches up with one two negative anion and they are neutral. That's it for today. We're gonna to practice a few more tomorrow. Hope you're listening and uh, we'll practice also doing writing the names, but they're very simple as well. Thank you, bye.